In 2020, there were three hugely controversial stories in the United States. The COVID-19 pandemic, the presidential election, and the death of an unarmed black man outside a Minneapolis food store. The pandemic is said to have killed over half a million people in the U.S. Government actions sent the economy into a ditch and most Americans into virtual house arrest. The election is still being contested by millions of voters, but neither of these events sparked a fraction of the civil unrest that was caused by the death of George Floyd. The New York Times says that what resulted was the largest protest movement in U.S. history. These aren't numbers of protesters. These are numbers of protests. There were 500 demonstrations on June 6th alone. Tuesday marked the one-year anniversary of George Floyd's death. But the fuse is always burning, isn't it? Before long, another unarmed black man will die in a police encounter and riots will follow. Why? Police officers stop tens of millions of Americans each and every year, and 911 calls produce countless more interactions. Some tiny fraction of these contacts have always ended badly. Why the huge reaction to the George Floyd incident? Well, the size and length of protests had everything to do with the state and county shutdowns that disallowed every form of social contact except for protests, which strangely were not only allowed, but actively encouraged. It had everything to do with the excruciating nine minute video that went viral and the symbolism of a white knee on a black neck. But ultimately, the power of the Black Lives Matter movement, its reason for being, hinges on one simple idea, that somehow black lives do not matter very much to white America, and that the proof of that is in our police departments. I've done quite a few videos looking into race relations in the US, but this time I wanna stay focused like a laser on that one perception that blacks are in more danger from cops than whites are and that the killing of black men by police is at crisis level. So let's start the truck and get into it. When I present research to prove a point, I make sure that it doesn't come from a source that might be biased in the direction of my own beliefs or instincts. The graphs that I'm about to show you come from a study done by Skeptic Magazine's research wing. Skeptic was founded 30 years ago, not far from where I'm sitting, by Michael Shermer, PhD, following in the path of Richard Feynman, Carl Sagan, and other critical thinkers who've historically gathered in and around Caltech in Pasadena, California. Nobody has ever accused Shermer of being a conservative, but he does have a good BS detector. So when his magazine sponsored research into the perception that police are targeting black Americans, I thought it was worth a look. The study, run by two more PhDs, Kevin McAfee and Ananda Saeed, interviewed 980 people. The researchers took note of the respondents' political orientations and then asked two simple questions. The first question was this. If you had to guess, how many unarmed black men were killed by police in 2019? The options ranged from about 10 to more than 10,000. These are the results for question number one. The colored bars measure the responses. Please pause the video here and look it over. According to the Washington Post database used by the skeptic study, 13 unarmed black men were killed by police in 2019. But that data is gathered only from police departments who report all deaths to the FBI. So the real number is likely somewhat higher. The other database they consulted put the number at 27. It's striking that half of those who say they are very liberal believe the number to be a thousand or more. If I thought that, I'd be protesting too. This was the second question. If you had to guess, in 2019, what percentage of people killed by police were black? For this question, respondents could choose any number from zero to 100. Here are the results of question two. According to the skeptic study, the actual number is just about 25%. But if you know your population stats, that number still might seem unduly high. Let's look at the census figures from 2019. This is white alone, 76.3%. And this is African-American alone, 13.4%. You might ask, so why is the percentage of unarmed black men dying in police custody about twice that of their representation in the populace? That's a fair question. Let's ask the FBI to answer it. 
we'll use their universal crime reporting database, which is the standard resource. Here's table 43A. It shows us percentage of arrests for all crimes. White Americans, 69.4%, about six points below their percentage in the population. And Black Americans, well, it's 26.6%, just a bit higher than their percentage of overall deaths in police custody. And again, it's almost exactly double their 13.4% share of the population. Doesn't logic tell us that if blacks are arrested at twice the rate of whites, their chance of being killed while being arrested is also double? Do we really need racism to explain that? I don't want to belabor the point, but let's go down to the bottom of this chart and compare the proportions of violent crime. Here, blacks jump to 36.4%, while whites drop to 59.1%. But since we're talking about life and death, let's go back to the top and look at charges of murder and manslaughter. Here, African Americans' percentage of arrests is over half of the total number, over half for a group that's only 13.4% of the population. It's hard to imagine that making arrests for the most deadly crimes would not carry an increased risk for all involved. Now we can talk about why more blacks are arrested for murder and manslaughter, and if there are some biases to be found there. You might remember when Juan Williams got in trouble for saying that homicide was the leading cause of death for young black males. This was when Black Lives Matter was rising to prominence over the Michael Brown shooting. Here's the PolitiFact check on his accuracy. This is a direct screen grab. Elsewhere in the same article, PolitiFact mentions the other statistic we were all beginning to understand, that 93% of murder victims are killed by people of their own race. I found CDC charts for 2018. Homicide is still the number one cause of death for black males between birth and age 44. Who has to arrest these victims' killers? The police. This must help to explain why more black men than white men are arrested on suspicion of murder. If that wasn't the case, police could not be doing their jobs. By comparison, this is how homicide ranks as a cause of death for young white males, numbers four and five for the same age categories. It stands to reason that if whites were being murdered more often, then more whites would be getting arrested for those murders. If you just do a little research, the whole basis of the Black Lives Matter movement evaporates before your eyes. Listen, George Floyd was not a role model. George Floyd was a grown man who should have known better than to resist arrest, which is a crime, while in the commission of two other crimes, passing a fake bill and being under the influence of illegal drugs. Nevertheless, it's sad that he died. But Derek Chauvin was tried and convicted just as surely, more surely, as he would have been had George Floyd been white. The $27 million payout to Floyd's family surely exceeds what a white guy's family would have received in the same circumstances. If you died in police custody, would your people get $27 million? Would the president invite them to the White House? If there is a racial disparity in how blacks and whites are treated by cops, the evidence is not in the data. But every time a black petty criminal is killed by a white cop, a very distinct racial disparity can be seen, just not one that favors whites. On the political left, black lives do matter very, very much, as long as those lives have been ended and white cops can be blamed. The George Floyd, Derek Chauvin case tells us nothing important about race in America or police brutality. Nothing that is, except that these fake stories of systemic racism remain the favored tactic of Democratic politicians and left-wing media. Their goal is to keep Black people disheartened and aggrieved. That guarantees that Blacks will continue voting en masse for the party that they think cares most about them. I say this as a former Democrat. How much more likely is a black kid to resist the police if he's been told that most white cops are racist and that hundreds or thousands of young black men die in police custody each year? People die because of this false narrative. This is what's called a long con, an elaborate swindle played out over a long period of time with multiple marks. 
in this case, multitudes of marks. And the unwitting accomplices, well, they are the millions of earnest white liberals who are well-intentioned but stunningly ill-informed. Thank you for listening. I hope that you'll pass this along to a friend or family member who watches CNN. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, subscribe to our channel and then click the little bell to get notifications.